In today's video, I'm going to show you this stack of back issues that I picked up when I made my first trip out to the new location of a store called Comic Book College. Check it out. Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel. My name's Chris, and this is North Garden Comics. Today's haul comes from the oldest comic book store in Minnesota. That's Comic Book College. They've been around since 1974. And earlier this year, they moved to a new location. On the downside, for me, that means I'm not going to get there as frequently because they're further away and I can't just pop over as conveniently as I used to be able to. And this haul today is actually my first trip to that new store. But on the upside, the new space they're in is significantly larger than any space they've been in previously. It really feels like a warehouse that's been converted into a retail space. So there's plenty of room for storage. There's long boxes on shelves everywhere, high ceilings. And you really get the sense when you walk in the door that you could find just about any comic book you're looking for. And for somebody like me who loves the thrill of the hunt, the potential is just brimming when you walk in the door. So I'm excited for them in their new space, much larger. I like the feel. And uh, I was happy to be able to get there for this first trip to do some diving in their dollar bins and their 50 cent bins. And they offer even some uh, additional discounts when you buy more books in those. And I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about those when we get into the books themselves. But for anyone who's in the area, if you want to check them out, I'll put links to Comic Book College, both their website and social media presence, down below in the description of this video. So now let's go ahead and get to this haul. The first several books you're going to see here are bagless, and that's because they came out of their 50 cent section. But the additional deal that they offer you on the 50 cent books is that you can get three for a dollar, so just 33 cents a piece. And so I made sure that I found an even number of books to round out that three for a dollar deal. Uh, starting things off here, we've got this issue of Cable number 12 from his first volume. I didn't start collecting Cable until around issue 18, which were the issues that led up to the Age of Apocalypse. And then the name changed to X-Man. I collected those. And then I collected just a little bit of Cable once it came back to its main title here after the Age of Apocalypse. And so now I'm going back, just trying to get some of those early issues from this volume and some of the additional issues around Age of Apocalypse and the Onslaught story, but not trying to get the whole volume, just focusing on those early areas that I had previously collected back in the 90s. So I found this one book for 33 cents, issue number 12. Then I also found this copy of Cable number one. This is from volume three it's either two or three that this comes from it only ran for like 24 issues something like that not looking to get this volume at all just thought that was a pretty cool cover and it's a number one so i figured i'd grab it for the 33 cent price shifting over to an image book this is the kindred number three just a short limited series from the early days of image you got a Wills Portacio cover and let's see, I think, was it Brett Booth who does the interiors on this? Yeah, story by Jim Lee, Brandon Choi, Brett Booth, Sean Ruffner, and then pencils by Brett Booth. So just a, an early image issue. That was pretty cool to pick up and, and grab for cheap, so why not? And then these next couple of issues, Still the 33 centers, but these issues are tie-ins to the death and return of Superman. One of the ways that I like to, you know, set parameters for what I'm going to collect and how I'm going to collect is by using omnibus editions as like the generator for my wish list. So in this case, I had some of the issues from this storyline back when they came out but not nearly all of them. And recently there was a reprinting of the Death and Return of Superman Omnibus, which had dozens of issues in it. It's a massive omnibus. And instead of getting that omnibus, I thought, you know what? I have some of the single issues. Let me go ahead, take a look at the table of contents of that omnibus, and I will 
use that as the basis for my wish list, and then I can build out that story in the form of single issues, especially when I can find them, in this case, for 33 cents a piece, or you know, in 50 cents or dollar bins. And so I found these two issues that both tie into that death and return of Superman omnibus table of contents. This is a cool cover, I think, with Supergirl and Superboy meeting. And then this is another tie-in issue here. And then I got one other Superman that wasn't technically part of that omnibus, but it was considered a minor key, so I got it since it was so cheap. This is Superman Man of Steel number 35. This is part one of this Worlds Collide event. And apparently this is the first appearance in the DC continuity of the character Static. And he shows up in the back here. So not normally just looking for keys if they're at market price, but for 33 cents, that was an easy pickup. And it's still kind of tied into that whole era of the Superman books that I'm looking to collect. All right, that does it for the 50 cent books or the three for a dollar books. The rest of these you'll see are all bagged and these came out of their dollar bins. But the deal that they offer you on dollar books is that if you buy 15, you can get them for $10. So basically it knocks 33% off. So they wind up being 66 cents a piece. So I'll usually go in pretty open-minded. If I you know, start to find a couple things here and there, uh, I'll slowly build out my pile. But once I hit a certain point, uh, especially as I get closer to 10 books, then I, you know, make the commitment to say, if I find, you know, eight or nine, then I'm going all the way to 15 because I'm not, it's basically going to be like the last five books are free anyway. So I was able to find 15 books on this day of hunting just so I could get that discount. And similarly to those Superman books, I am working on building out an event story that I took inspiration from the omnibus edition. So I had collected the Secret Invasion main event story in the form of single issues as back issues, and I didn't collect those new, and read that earlier this year. And then I figured, well, maybe I'd like to get some of the tie-ins. And some of the main tie-in issues were from the Mighty Avengers and the New Avengers. And I don't know if there were other main parts of the tie-in off the top of my head but there were plenty of other titles that did tie in, you know, but maybe more loosely. And so what I did was I went online, looked up the Secret Invasion Omnibus, which is not currently in print right now. That might be an omnibus I do get someday if they do another printing of that. I just like the story and we'll see if I continue to like it more or the same uh, from reading these tie-in issues. But that's an omnibus I might get just because I, I really do like that format for storytelling. And it's a format that I'm reserving for my favorite stories, my favorite events, uh, favorite runs, etc. for how I want to collect comics. Just because it's also a nice piece of uh, eye candy on the shelf there as well. But we'll see if I'll get the omnibus. I'll read these single issues first. So for now, continuing to chip away at the single issues. Again, using the Secret Invasion Omnibus as my wish list generator there. And got most of the Mighty Avengers tie-in issues from this day of hunting. Was able to get issue 12, 15, 16, 17, 19, and 20 and the secret invasion story i think there's a, a like a a lead up issue from around issue seven of this volume but then really that 12 to 20 21 in that area oh it must be 20 because here's this is the epilogue um i was able to get most of those issues all in one fell swoop for less than a dollar piece so that that was a fun find and then on top of that i got some of the new avengers tie-in issues finding issue 38 44 and 45. I have far fewer of the Secret Invasion tie-ins from New Avengers at this point 
the issues that it, that wrap into that event were like issues 31 and 32 and then 39 to 49. So I still got a ways to go on that, but happy to have found at least a, a few of those issues for less than a dollar a piece. So I'll continue to chip away at that and then I'll have at least that whole main omnibus contents in the form of the tie-ins as single issues. Here's a one-off that I stumbled across. Cyberforce Origins Psyblade, number one. I think this is a one-shot, but they did a few of these Origins issues for different characters. I like the Cyberforce, and you've seen in some of my other videos that I'm working on that Cyberforce early issues uh, collection. But this is a nice tie-in. Created by Mark Silvestri. He did the plot on this with Mike Heisler and the pencils in this issue are done by Joe Benitez, who is the creator, writer, artist for Lady Mechanica. So that should be a good take on this as well. Looks like Lara Croft, Tomb Raider and Psylocke <laughs> mixed together there. But and just an, a nice single issue find with great art and a title that I'm working on getting you know the, the main ongoing for. And that's a nice Mark Silvestri cover on that as well. All right, last thing to show you, several issues that I was not expecting to find, didn't even know these existed really. Uh, I've said in many of my videos that I'm a huge Transformers fan. This is both a show and a comic, apparently. Didn't even know it was a comic. Transformers Robots in Disguise. And it's got some of the character designs that you see in the Transformers Prime show and comics. And so because I'm a huge Transformers fan, I definitely wanted to pick up these issues because I never see them and figure I'm probably not going to see them again. They're look more like an all ages type of a title and issues, but they had several of them. I think it's like a six part limited series that ran for this title, but they had issue number one and there's variants for each of these. So I just chose what was in the best condition and what I liked the most of what they had available there. Cause they did have a, for a few of the issues, they had multiple copies with different covers, but here's the main cover for issue number one. Sadly, they did not have issue two, so that could wind up being a very long-term hole in my wish list. Uh, but who knows, maybe I'll find it eventually. But there's issue three, and that's the, the sub cover, which is like a C cover, I guess, or subscription cover. Then they had issue number four. I think that's just the main A cover. Issue five. And then lastly, issue six, which was a variant as well. So like I said, unfortunate that they didn't have a copy of number two, because that would have let me finish the whole thing all at once. I don't know if or when I'll ever see these again, but it, you know, I'm still gonna pick them up because uh, I'd, I'd love to get anything Transformers related uh, in comics. Although I will say there's one exception to that. It's the the comics that are inspired by the movie character designs, I never really got into those. And maybe it's because I never really got into the live action movies, but everything other than that, I definitely like to find in comic book form. And I've got some other really good finds that I found recently, but those are gonna be still coming in a future video. So stay tuned for those. For now though, those wrap up my haul from this very first trip to the new location of Comic Book College. All right, that's gonna do it for me, and that's gonna wrap up this modest back issue haul that I picked up on my first trip to the new location of the oldest store in Minnesota, Comic Book College. I do hope you saw something that you liked. Are you collecting any of those titles or runs? How about the idea of collecting stories based on the contents of omnibus editions? Any of you do that yourself? Let me know your own collecting habits down below. Now also to give you a little bit of a teaser 
I've got some really good things coming up as I'm looking over at my shelves over here. I've got a massive stack of books that I picked up during a 25 cent sale hosted by Hot Comics and Collectibles. I've also got a great stack of books that I got during the Pulp Comics half price back issue sale when they sold all their dollar books for just 50 cents a piece. And I still have a haul to share with you from the very first ever show hosted by a local Facebook group called the Minnesota Comic Exchange. So lots of great stuff coming up in the weeks to come. But in the meantime, in case you're not quite ready for the YouTube fun to stop, I have hand selected a couple videos here for you to check out. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.